Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Arequipa in Peru. Arequipa, as you can see, is in the more southerly region of Peru. It has a coastline here on the Pacific Ocean and it, its major geographic feature is the Andes Mountains that really just dominates most of the area. It's definitely at the point where the Andes are still quite high but they're gonna start petering out the more south we go into Chile because it's gonna hit the Atacama Desert right about here but it kind of goes more like like this. So it's not massive, massive, massive peaks, but still very big, right? <laughs> still large mountains. It's just when you think of the Andes, you think of like towering strato volcanoes and things. They are very big, but they're not massive here. But this area is really covered in a lot of rivers and when you have those big high peaks and those rivers you create some really amazing landscapes there's lots of beautiful beautiful can canyons i almost said canyons canyons the coca river you can see right here creates one of the deepest canyons in the world and don't worry we will take a look at it on google Also interestingly, it's pointed out on this map that it's home to one of the most likely sources of the Amazon River here. It's very hard to say exactly where it begins, since many, many rivers forge into the mighty Amazon. So it's believed to be one of the many starting points. There's a few and they're all in Peru, actually. That's interesting. The largest city is of course Arequipa, which is the second largest city in Peru after the capital city, Lima. It's nicknamed the White City, and actually, I'm going to show you why, because the historical center of Arequipa is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And like all the sites that we cover, I pull up UNESCO's website on my tablet, and we read about it together historical center of the city of Arequipa. The historic center of Arequipa, built in volcanic Slar rock, represents an integration of European and native building techniques and characteristics, expressed in the admirable work of colonial masters and Criollo and Indian masons. This combination of influences is illustrated by the city's robust walls, archways, and vaults, courtyards, and open spaces, and the intricate Baroque decorations of its facades. There's some nice pictures here, but we are definitely going to look at this on Google Earth after we go over the history portion of Arequipa. But you can see, um, these are monasteries. Well, this is all one monastery, but, but so you can see the, the courtyard there, and beautiful arches and towers. And it's called the White City because that volcanic rock that they built the city center out of is very white, almost like a chalky color. Hence the name the White City. Arequipa has a very interesting skyline, I guess. There are three big volcanoes that almost surround it like this. The most famous being Vulcan Misti. The other two around it, which are Pichu Pichu and Chachani, which are great names, uh, are much bigger, but Misti is that very characteristic volcano shape. Like if you asked a child to draw a picture of a volcano, you have the, you know, that and the snow on top. That's exactly what uh, Misty looks like. So it's very, like, the 
one of the main things like you can't miss in the city you can see it from everywhere one of the main characteristics of our keeper and let's see that being said i think that was all the notes that i had we will look at more um let's see all that i had was the other canyons there's the um Katahuasi, Kotahuasi Canyon right here. Um, the famous thing about Coca and Kotahuasi is that they are some of the deepest canyons in the world. Which is really cool. You think, what's the deepest canyon? You think the Grand Canyon, but these like, are far deeper. And some sources I read said that Coca was the deepest, and then I read another source that said it's the second deepest that Kotohuasi is the deepest, so I'm like, okay, let's set the record straight. And from what I can tell, I have been to many sources, I think the deepest canyon of the world is in Tibet, not Peru. But they're very deep nonetheless. They're very, very deep. But let's talk about the history of this place before we go and explore the geography of it. Arequipa has been inhabited by humans for a very long time. There are many different ancient indigenous cultures that lived in this area. There were the um, Kolagwa, there were the Wari, and many others, Amara speaking peoples. And they would eventually be dominated by the Inca. So the Inca came in, the area here was an important stopover on the Inca road, the road network they had throughout the mountains. Arequipa, apparently, you know, hold on, oh, that's a good Arequipa apparently comes from an Incan phrase meaning let's stay here or something like that. What I've been meaning to say is that for a lot of the past regions I've covered on my channel, a lot of them had names that are debatable, so I've just skipped the section about where their name comes from, but I kind of like it when they name. Like, let's, let's camp here. Let's stay here. I think we should stay here. It's where the word comes from. Allegedly, there's a few sources, but that's the one I saw the most. But it's really weird whenever I cover a region and it's like, well, it could mean this or this or this or this, and it's like, I'll just skip that part, but allegedly. The name Arequipa came from when the Incas moved into the area. The Spanish, of course, came in during the early 1500s, and the city of Arequipa was founded in 1540, and it became a major trading center for the Spanish to bring all the silver that was being mined over in Potosi, which is just over here. I don't think it's on camera. You know, but it's just off right there. Potosi, what's now Bolivia. And many other places in the area. But most of them would come through here so that it would ship out. I assume toward Panama, right? It's a very, very major center. And many, many peninsulares would live here in the many, many, many years that Spain held control over the vice -royal. Peninsular is meaning people who were born in Spain that moved here. Um, typically, um, people who were born here or people who were of mixed descent did not quite get along with the Peninsulares. And definitely after revolution and rebellion and wars against the Spanish for their independence, um, the Peninsulares weren't looked upon very kindly, but most of them still lived in this area here. And it remained loyal to Spain until the war was over and they had no choice but to decide to become part of the new country. And because of that political history, many political movements have begun in Arequipa. Many political figures were born here and grew up here and went to school here. Uh, many coups, attempted coups, um, 
scan here things like that, you know, uprising stuff like that it was made the capital of Peru twice, actually in 1835 there was a big political split and um, one side of the aisle moved down here and said this is now the capital while the other side was in Lima and they argued back and forth until they figured themselves out but it was made the capital again in 1881 during the war of the pacific and that was when Peru and Bolivia were fighting against Chile and Chile would go on to dominate but Chile had invaded Lima so the government moved down to Arequipa until Chile occupied Arequipa in 1884 and it was given back when the dust settled which is kind of interesting because next week we're going to talk about this region of Chile which Chile kept after this war so just keep that in mind so we're going to talk about Arequipa next week I think in exactly one week really find many other interesting things in history other than, you know, trains were built in industry, so on and so forth, typical modernization of the 20th century, you know the only really other major thing that happened was an earthquake in 2001 it was an 8.4 and it damaged many of the very old protected buildings in the historical center of Arequipa They've, of course, since been restored and rebuilt, but very devastating that a lot of the original architecture was lost in that earthquake, but as we're going to look on Google Earth, this area is very seismically active. It's absolutely covered in volcanoes. We talked about a few of them already. And earthquakes and things like that are very common in this part of the world two tectonic plates colliding and merging upon each other creates some of the largest earthquakes in recorded history very massive so with that being said why don't I pull out my tablet and we'll take a look at Arequipa here it's a little hard to see among all these mountains but I have Arequipa highlighted there now you can see the department at least is highlighted zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world you can see that tectonic plate here but you can see we are in the heart of the Andes here it gets really massive around this area here but they're still quite big up here the world's longest mountain chain so you can see in relation to South America where we're talking about Arequipa it's a little slideshow for the department which is kind of nice because it's a lot of pictures of the Pacific Coast which I couldn't find a lot of pictures of in Google Earth so let's take a look at some of them there's a lot of this beautiful archway here some of the beautiful, beautiful architecture here with the palm trees sorry if you can hear my cat crying at the door find beachy pictures for you. This is so pretty. Look at this. Definitely more inland, right? Yeah, there's the ocean. You can see the rail line here, too. Very, very important for industry in the area. Getting that up to and from the Rickety Bridge. Let's see, there's a nice beach there. And you can get some good food over there, I bet you. nice to see some beachy pictures because most of the pictures that I'm going to show you are mountain pictures so. but let's first head into the city of Arequipa that's not the city <laughs> that's just the marker Arequipa there we go so let's start off you know what's really weird first of all there are so many parks in Arequipa department that have these big dinosaurs. 
I found four of them at least. <laughs> Two of them are around the city. There's another one on the other side. But then I found some in like rural towns. These little dinosaur parks with all these dinosaurs. What in the world? There's gotta be a story there. <laughs> there had to have been someone that just dumped all their movie props or something. I don't know. gonna go to the historical center. We need to be, let me see, I'm definitely lost. It's over here. This, this area, with the, all the squares. All right, so we have our main center here. The basilica is probably the best example of this gorgeous Beautiful stonework, this Spanish style, I suppose. Like, like a classic European style, I suppose. That most cathedrals are built in. It's very pretty, especially the interior. I just, I love them. This big courtyard, view from the roof. You can see the old bells there. Nice big view from up high there. Very cool. There's a lot of interesting little sites. I want to show you one of the monasteries, or I guess cloisters they're called. This is one of them. Very, look at the details there. Oh, I can't zoom in on pictures anymore on Google Earth. It's such a bummer. <laughs> but the, the tiny little details in the buildings are so pretty. A little fountain there. Very, very nice. Definitely something you'd expect to find in Western Europe, right? There's the mountain looming overhead. Whoa. Right there. And then the really pretty one is this one. Santa Catalina. I was reading about this. It was built, you know, in like the late 1500s. And it wasn't opened up the public to anyone who wasn't like a nun until the 1970s. There's still nuns that live on the property, but it's now a place for people to explore and enjoy this gorgeous, gorgeous place. These bright colors, too. Lots of cool little artifacts in them. The little gardens. Is that not so lovely? There's something so, like, European about it, but something off about it. You know, it has that, um, like, Latin American, South American touch to it. But, so it's, like, distinct to be a full good little well. So neat. Over here is a cool museum. Now, they do have a mummy in here. So be warned, there, there is a photo of a, a Nigerian Peruvian mummy. Also warning for next week, we're talking about Arico, we're going to see some Chinchoro mummies. So just keep that in mind if, you, if you're disturbed by looking at uh, people who were once alive. But really cool little statues here, a beautiful headdress made out of reeds it looks like some pottery, sandals, isn't that so neat? Old shoes, so many different cultures living here, once upon a time. Let's see. Cool. see, I wish I could zoom in and read, but it's all in Spanish anyway. There's a photo of one of the mummies, I think that's the only one in the slideshow, with some um, um, mannequins there all dressed up. Beautiful building as well. This old Peruvian flag. My goodness, I wish I could zoom in and read how old it is. I bet it's from like the independence wars, you know. I bet it's an old flag. But yeah, the cathedral looking at a beautiful little courtyard there too. That looks like the monastery. The only other place that's not dinosaur themed that 
want to show you. There's so many cool things here, but I'm, we're going to look at Alpaca World. <laughs> um, it's I, I stumbled across this when I was looking for things to show you guys. I'm like, Mundo Alpaca, I gotta check that out and see if the alpaca is right. But then I was on tourist websites saying, you know, what should you see when you come to Arequipa? And it's like, oh, you can go mountain climbing. You can go to the canyons, and you can come to Mundo Alpaca. <laughs> Apparently, this is a big place for tourists. You can see an indigenous woman here weaving in a very traditional style, probably with the wool from the alpacas and the vicuñas as well. I found a vicuña farm a little farther north than I was playing. I don't know if we'll find it later, but they're so sweet. What goofy little guys. <laughs> Is there a luxurious fur if you've never felt alpaca? It's so nice. There's a cashmere goat as well. Those are also very nice, but alpaca wool is so cozy. And look at this traditional weaving here, and you can see the alpacas and the condors and the little vicuñas. So cool. Nevertheless, let's go explore some of these mountains. So here you can see, let me put it in 3D maybe. Oh yeah, you can see it better. Uno. Dos, tres, right? These big mountain peaks, but misty right here being the very obvious dominant one of Okami Steam. Just get a good, yep, that's, oops, nope, I want this one. That's the shot I wanted. Just a very typical volcano shape, right? There's lots of pictures in these slideshows of people climbing it. And you don't really get the full experience seeing people in the snow and the, how tall they are area is just littered with volcanoes and cracky peaks and all that. But we gotta check out the canyons. I'm upside down like Tilly Cox upside down. Let's look at this canyon here. Very beautiful. Just look where it goes. But, oh, there's no... It's just a mountain. <laughs> just another mountain. And there's so many here. There's Chachami. Over here is Papa Papa. That's Papa Papa. That's Peachy Peachy. Great little ASMR name. Peachy 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 Peachy. It's not popping up. Oh. This is Coca Canyon. Just in that window. And it's very beautiful to see. Two weeks are gonna see the most beautiful canyon in the world, so hold tight. But this isn't too bad, isn't it? Over here is the spot that every tourist website says you have to come to the cross of the condor, Cruz del Condor. And it's called that for two reasons. One, there is a big old cross over here. And two, you can see, there's the cross, you can see Andean condors in the wild, the world's largest flying bird very, very endangered birds. Absolutely massive wingspan. But it's one of the few places where you can stand and look out across this gorgeous landscape here and see these majestic, gigantic birds. Welcome to the Condor Cross. It's so, so pretty. Yeah, that's beautiful. These rivers digging into, you know, all this volcanic rock. It's a very soft rock, so very uh, gooey rock, you know. <laughs> Creating these cool canyons. And then, make me sure I'm not going too far. Yeah, not going too far. Kura Wasmia. I can never say it. Oh no, we're too far. That's Machu Picchu. I knew it. I knew it. That's Machu Picchu. Kotohuasi. Kotohuasi. I was right. We went too far and wound up at Machu Picchu. <laughs> but here's the other big canyon that I read on some website saying it was the deepest canyon in the world. When it's like number four. <laughs> number five. 
I think maybe like number three or four or something. And Coca Canyon is just behind it. They have tradition in both sides. See, so like lots of Spanish cultural things preserved in this corner of Peru because of the loyalists, right? That held fast to their old ways. Very pretty. I like this shot. That's beautiful. Ooh, would you cross that? I don't know if I could. I would not be able to look down. Look at the cacti. How beautiful. Right there. Right there. It's a silhouette. I like to think about how every place in the world is somebody's boring every day, right? That person who commented on one of the video about whales, about how they're from Wales and Wales is so boring. And it's like, listen, somebody lives here and thinks this is boring. Everywhere is somebody's every day, and they think it's boring and plain, and, but you just have to really appreciate just how magnificent the world is around you. There's beauty everywhere, especially in places like this. Let's tap on a random mountain and take a look. Oh, darn. There's so many mountains that don't even have storage. Let's see. Maybe that's what this one's for. Nope. Give me a mountain. These are all mountain peaks I'm tapping on, by the way. That's how many there are here. Oh, here we go. We've got Miss Me. So pretty. Look at that. Oop. Someone's a little steamy. So nice. My goodness. I wonder how much you have to adjust to elevation in places. Oh, wow. She up on the mountain in her traditional clothes, looking fierce. Fantastic. I love that. Feeling that it's very cold, I assume the spring water there would be so chilly. I have to wonder how much is clouds, how much is steam, right? With the volcanoes. Such a beautiful place. I highly encourage you to look around on Google Earth yourself and find your own little slideshows. Maybe you'll find another dinosaur park. Let's just find one more pretty slideshow. It's this. I don't know if we're still in Archipel. Let's see. Let me zoom out real quick. Make sure we're still in the department. I think we are really close to Archipel. Let's close it on this. Oh, look at that. The wild friends out there. How cute. Oh, my goodness. This has seen some thermal activity, hasn't it? But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this style of video, please consider subscribing. This is a salt flat. We're not in Bolivia, are we? No, look at this salt flat. Just making sure we're still in Peru, right? Yes, <laughs> we are still in Peru. If you enjoy this style of Content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. And next we're going to be going to Scotland. I've been researching this part of Scotland for like three weeks now because there's so much to it and so much to explore and I'm trying to figure out. I still haven't written the script for it. I've written like half the script. Um, but there's just so much history and so much detail to this place and I have to whittle down and choose what I have to talk about. That's Scotland for you. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. Look at these old bags. How cute. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good day.